I'm Rod Gilbert, stand-up comedian. People tell me I've got the toughest job in town, but I'm sure I'll find other things far more difficult. So I'm ditching my regular job and trying something completely different. This is my work experience. And this week, I'm a farmer. All I knew was I was going to a dairy farm, so I needed to practice milking something. Unfortunately, the only thing I found to milk was my flatmate, comedian Lloyd Langford. Oh, that's the way, Lloyd. You're doing well now. You need to warm your hands up. You need to warm your udders up. Oh, no, you've sort of lost your rhythm, eh? I have lost my rhythm now. It's not as easy as it looks, farming. Oh, I'm not an expert, but I don't think you should be coming out of that part of the teat. <laughs> Look at that! It's our cup overflow with Lloyd! Milking Lloyd with his rubber glove udders gave me an invaluable insight into the difficulties I would face working with real cows. This is going to be pretty brutal. It's early mornings, it's manual labour. Look at me, I've got hands like a snooker referee, not a farmer. It's a million miles away from what I do. The closest I come to being a farmer is when I do a gig in England and somebody does a sheep noise at me. This is the farmyard. Judging by the smell, I'm in the right place. The thought of being a farmer made me as happy as a crated veal calf. This pretty West Wales farm belonged to the Robinsons and would be my home for the next few days. Hi. Hi, I'm Ginzy. Hi, it's Rod. Rod. I've been tiptoeing all the way here through the muck. Yeah, you need wellies. I do. Luckily, Ginzy was packing rubber. Wellied up, we went to meet husband, David. Got to weather cow. It's unusual. Yeah, how accurate it is. If the BBC can't get it right, I'm not sure a cow can do it. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Hi. David. Yep. Hi, Rod. Yeah. Hello. You met your wife, Jinsey? Yes. <laughs> David had been farming all his life. For a few days, I would be his poo-spattered apprentice. Well, it's typical, you know, you've turned up after all the morning work's been done. Have I? I'm very good at that. Yeah. What am I going to have to do? Anything that's going. Yeah. I've got a list. OK. What's a normal morning? Milking, feeding the animals, bedding them down, clean the cows, feed the cows. David's day sounded like a shopping list of all my fantasies. I was too turned on to listen properly. Something about milking a sheep, feeding a log and bedding a tractor. One of the bulls recognised his late wife in my leather jacket, so I picked something from David's Farmani collection. Looked like a slightly farmery version of the Red Devils. Come here. Hey, you didn't pay me any attention in my London gear. Now look at me, like one of the family. Hey. As a trainee farmer, my benefits package included a head-turning company car. Take a seat. Ah, the seat I can, I can do. I know where the seat is. Seat, steering wheel, after that I'm lost. You have a key there that starts it. You pull the red button to stop it. You have a horn, spool valve control there, a splitter box, PTO, diff lock, two-wheel drive, four-wheel drive, left hand, PTO. It's now off. The gears in the normal position is one. Straight back, you get three. Normally, where you get three in a car, you've got two and go straight back when you've got reverse. Right, all fairly straightforward. Turn the key and it'll start. I'll level with you. I zoned out about four minutes ago. Right. Key. Yes. Oh, we're racing now. Yep. Feel the wind in my hair. I may have looked like a shit stained stig, but this wasn't top gear, this was the tractor factor. You've got to reverse it now through that gate. Really? Yeah. What could possibly go wrong? This way. Totally wrong way. No. Totally no. the wrong way. I think, why is it going that way? Why is it turning? I've got the bloody wheel straight. It is absolutely impossible. Whatever I do, that trailer goes where it wants to go. Oh. Oh, I almost hit the car. Oh, 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 no, don't do that! We've been trying for about half an hour to get that trailer through this gateway. Oh, I've had enough of this! Ah! This is the one. It's a bit tight. I know this isn't how you wanted it, but it's in. The bloody thing's in. You can't complain about that. It's your trailer, dude. There's something wrong with it, honestly. It's, uh, uh, take it back. I would take it back. Have you got the receipt? Um... What sort of dung is this, David? Not that it makes a great deal of difference, to be honest with you. When you've had one fork full of shit thrown in your face, you've had them all. This is the reality of a stable. You never have some kid coming home going, you never guess who they've cast me as in the nativity play, mother. They've given me this fork and I've got a shovel calf dung all the way through the performance. It might sound strange, given that I was inhaling neat cow's urine, but a little bit of me was enjoying this. Come on! It's never the cesspit of human history has so much dung been shifted by so few. 
I am the farmer. Eat my dung. But just as I was starting to enjoy it, it all went a bit CSI Llandisil. A neighbour's sheep had been attacked by dogs, and David had been called in to deal with it. I'm going to quickly, as they say, put it out of its misery. The sheep had been so badly mauled by the dogs, there was no chance of recovery. <laughs> Is that it? Yep. It's dead? Yep, that's what the dogs have done to it. And the dogs did that? Yes. It's sort of, uh, bring, it's bringing me quite close to tears. Poor thing. Mm. Just put that sheep to sleep and uh, just to cheer us up, we've come to have a look at some piglets. And, ow! I think I just got bitten on the arse by a cow. Oh, I tell you what, this is the highs and lows of farming in microcosm, isn't it? We've just put a sheep to sleep and now look at these. So these pigs will be eaten. Yes. Bacon, gammon. Yes. Sausages! 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 Easy saying it. <laughs> They're marvellous because they can eat the banana skins, the apple cores, the scraps. Nature's recycler? Yes. Never mind the... all these green bags with food waste, you just stick it in a pig. Stick it through a pig. Oh, he's having a pee. Get away, piglets! <laughs> Look at that. They're too curious for their own good. Get back, it's not the Trevi fountain. <laughs> when you've got to go. go. Oh, on the nose! You've got to go when you've got to go. Yeah, I know you've got to go when you've got to go, but you don't have to go on your kids. <laughs> Back at our farm, I had to get over to the cow shed, so David taught me how to tell a cow's ass from his elbow. Rodna, you're off to spread the straw, Yeah. but when you walk past the cows, give them a quick scratch as you walk by. It lets them know that you're there, so they won't kick you. But if they don't know I'm there at all, then they're not going to kick out. There's no logic in that. They wouldn't kick me if they didn't think I was yes, there. Yes, but if you actually startle a cow, she'll kick. Basically, I've got to make my way through this. It's like, it's like some kind of, uh, some kind of walk of death. How am I going to get through here? Scratch, scratch, scratch. Don't kick me, please. This is what would happen if Harrison Ford was on Emmerdale. Oh, they're closing ranks. Come on, I'm supposed to be the farmer. I'm supposed to be the, in control of this situation. This is an animal farm. Get out of the way. Only me. I've got to be very careful as well because there's two ends to a cow. One of them you see on butter adverts, the other one's the one I'm worried about. I'm not scratching you, look at the state of you. Room service! <laughs> Don't move, relax. <sighs> My arms are absolutely off. I hope you appreciate this. Oh, yeah, I am finished with that. Don't eat your bed. Evening, and my biggest challenge so far. 50 milky space hoppers, one confined space. It was time to put everything I'd learnt milking Lloyd into practice. It's really quite scary being around them, and you don't know, you never know quite what's gonna happen. If Lloyd had done that when I milked him, I'd have doubled his rent. Right, watch Rod. Left hand just to let her know I'm there, and give each teat a good wipe. And then squeeze a bit of milk on the floor to see that they're working properly. Right, now your turn. I'm here. Clean, clean, clean. This feels so wrong. Uh, I'm here, don't worry. It's only me. Really unpleasant. I'm like, is this one work it? Your back left one's off. Come on, put the back left one on, please. Right, now you've got to put the cluster on. Only me. This is the cluster. Got to try and get this onto this cow. Get it on nice and quietly. Pop your little teeth in there. Have it back. Yeah, all right. And then you do the next one, and the next one, and the next one, till they're all, all finished. And stand back and let one in. All right, I'm going to let another one in. See, I'm really... They are enormous animals. And it is quite scary being near the back of them. You'd go into uh, slot two, please. Oh, no, not you. Oh, no, not you. Stand back, stand back. Excuse me, would you mind... If you'd like to... Oh, no, not another one, no, Just no. Just be quiet. Oh, no! You make too much noise, they'll all start. Really? Well, they're starting it. If they stop doing it, I'll stop making a noise. Ah, get off! Sorry. Now look what you've done. I'll just conduct while these lot just... Ah. 
instead of an orchestra and violinists and cellists, I simply have cow's anuses and diarrhea. wanted to come in. If I was in the kitchen and my mother did that in the lounge, I wouldn't come in either. I regretted making so much noise, because I think I'd rather go for a drink with Jeremy Kyle than muck this place out again. Luckily, my next job was less traumatic. You must be yesterday's car. Hey, come on. You're only a day old, you can't have an attitude. Come on. <laughs> come on, it's nice to... Come on, then. Hey, come here. Enough of this. Come on. Straddle it. Straddle it, all right, OK. That's it. Oh, come here. Yeah, come on, I'm not going to ride you! <laughs> Even this little newborn dairy bull rumbled me. Come on. He wasn't born yesterday. <laughs> well, he was, but he could still tell I was no farmer. Come here. Make the most of it, I won't be here. Oh, sorry. 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 Just to comply with EU rules, this calf has to be tagged. That's my herd number, and that's the calf number. Is this going to hurt her? Yes. Oh. OK, OK. okay. Shh, there we go. Come here. Come here. But it really hurts if you catch your finger skin in there. I don't care about you, David. No offence. Hey, come here. Come here. Come here, 344. Four. He did it. Come here. I was his mum for a few minutes. I fed him. And then he got his ears pierced. And like most kids, once they get their ears pierced, they become stroppy little teenagers and want nothing to do with their parents. That's their gratitude. You've changed. Come here. You're not David Bowie. I'd worked harder than a skunk's PR man today. Apparently, the best way to unwind was by shooting a rabbit in the face. We've come out to shoot rabbits if there's any around. Want to go to Oxford Services? A lot's there, are there? There's hundreds just off the A40. No, it's a bit too far to go tonight. Yeah, and they don't like it if you start shooting in the car park. How many rabbits would you normally expect to get on a night like this, David? You'd see a couple of little bright eyes there. Bright eyes burning like fire. Uh, no, they're sort of a greeny colour. Oh, no, it's a song. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> but bright eyes, they're a sort of greeny colour. It's not a very good song, to be honest, David. Bright eyes. Our pest control efforts were thwarted. The rabbits had all gone to bed early to do what rabbits do best. So we headed to Clandisil's premier night spot instead. It's a very calm place, isn't it? Yeah, been... This should be available as therapy on the NHS. Instead of whale music and wind chimes, relaxation CDs should be cows getting ready for bed. Stick this on a DVD uh, yeah, of a cow shed at night. Yeah, but you're only getting one dimension then. Half of the dimension is actually being there and feeling the cow. Well, you only get half the dimension with the, the whale's music as well, to be fair. True, true, yes. <laughs> oh, you'd be drowned if you were with them. Yeah, all right, you with them. <laughs> so, You're always so pragmatic. <laughs> Missing one dimension, we gave the cows a quick feel, read them a story and kissed the pretty ones goodnight. Next day, I was literally lactating with excitement. When you've dreamt about a place this often, the reality can be a letdown, but Carmarthen Cattle Market was everything I'd imagined. Auctioneer John revealed all. Hey, John, the calf ring. What's well, going on there now with all that shouting? Yeah, we'll go up there now, that's, that's the sale ring. As the calves arrived, the crowd went wild. It was like Beatlemania. Why is it that fast? Basically, you've got 450 or 500 calves to sell in a few hours, so they've got to get through them. He's stressing me out, just listen to them. They're on the beef calves at the minute. So, Richard's valued that calf at 100 pounds. Yeah, it looks like you bid him, eh, mate? I know. You won't pick a bid off me, don't worry. There's a massive variation in what the calves make. The bottom will be 20 pounds, while the top will be 350 pounds. That's a bargain, a calf for 20 quid. You couldn't, couldn't knit it for that, John. Hey, look at this white one. That's a dairy beef calf, a dairy bull. Right. He's not a particularly good one. He's a dairy bird, so he's a boy with no nipples. Absolutely. At £28, I suggest you probably end up in an arbitrary in Chippenham tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. Turned out dairy was a sexist world where the boys were worthless. Dairy bulls were destined to be dog food. Yeah, yeah, the fingers move. That's a bit, is it? Uh, there's a wink. It's just a look occasionally. Just a look. How do you know somebody's just looking at you all of it? Just have a look. Oh, oh. Was that, there it is. There's the bit. There's the bit. 
There's a guy up there sort of put his hands in his pockets, rummaging around. Is he a bit annoyed or is he just overexcited by the calves? Next up, we met Sandra, a sizzling page three dairy stunner. All about dairy character. What's dairy character? The uh, capability, no, not quite, yeah. <laughs> To a degree, that, that's obviously where most of the milk is produced, but yeah. do you're looking for feminism and narrowness, effectively. What are we looking for, an hourglass cow, is it? Uh, no, no, a, a, a V-shaped cow, effectively. V-shaped? Yeah, she needs to be narrow in the front, yeah. coming back to width behind, which carries then the milk production vessel, which is the udder, not the breasts in town terms. <laughs> I see. Right, Rod, this is the dairy ring, this is where it all happens. Yeah. This is the rostrum. You have a stick in your hand. Yeah, I know what you're going to say next. You're going to have to have a go. Anyway. Yeah. You watch me have a go first. Yeah. And then the last cow in the ring, she'll be yours. And you can have a go selling her. There was more dairy character on show than Hooters Nottingham. Someone even stuck a tenner down this cow's top. Yeah, hey, fit looking cow. She's better. Looking better, yeah. Good ass on it. Good set of tumblers on it. It's like Barbara Windsor in her heyday, that one. Dribbling a bit, mind. John said this one's a lot easier. He said that don't worry, when we go to the dairy, it'll be a lot slower than the meat sales, isn't it? Easy by there. Huh? You like that one? Look at that. <laughs> I'll end up with this one now. If I do end up with it, you're, you're having it off, you'll buy it off me. <laughs> we'll milk it, we'll. <laughs> I'll buy it, you milk it. Did you get it? Yeah. Well, you bought it. Did you? I'm going to pick it up, are you? <laughs> I, didn't, I don't know, he was chatting to me. I don't know how he managed to buy a cow and chat to me at the same time. <laughs> uh, hello? Oh, sorry, I haven't used one of these before. We are bidding, ladies and gentlemen, on, um, on a cow. It's a cow, ladies and gentlemen, black one down there in the middle. 25 miles on the clock. Now, who will give me a pound? Feast your eyes on those others, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Do I owe a pound for anyone? A pound from the girls at the back there. Thank you very much. Come on. Where should we go next, John? More than a pound. A thousand pounds. 1100, 1100, 1100. Have we got any more than 1100? She says her interests are listening to music and going to the toilet. She wants to work with children eventually. She's a lovely cow. Any more than did that baby bid or was it involuntary spasm? What's he saying? 1150? Are you sure he's got the cash? Do I hear 1200 from anyone? It's going to the baby at the moment. It's going, I'll throw in the man in the hat. The bloke comes with it. Come on. Go in once. Go in twice. Hey. Sold. 1700. For the woman in the hat. Congratulations. Thank you very much. It's the most terrifying gig I've ever done. That was a really tough audience. It, it is a buzz and it, it's yeah. exciting. Yeah. It's better than uh, better, better than, than sex. Else. Not quite well. It depends, <laughs> it depends who you're with, obviously, but um, yeah. As an apprentice farmer, there was somewhere else I needed to go. The slaughterhouse. Gareth showed me round. I was dreading it. We just had a calf on the farm the day before yesterday. I fed it yesterday. I'm hoping it's not coming here. Anyway. What sort of calf is it? Black and white. It's about that eye. Male or female? <laughs> Male. Chances uh, are, if it's a black and white male, it probably will end up in a place like this. How long would you give him before he ends up here? A week or ten days. Normally putting a little hairnet on like this, I'd have a little comedy moment, but it doesn't really feel appropriate. The, the cows will be coming into this box and they'll be shooting them from that side of the box. How grim is it? It's the quickest way of putting an, a cow down. I'll get you in position for the first one. Uh, you can see that one, what happens. Well, I don't think I can watch. <laughs> Poor thing. A bolt about that long enters the cow's brain and it makes it brain dead. Now it's kicking and thrashing about and still That's making a noise. It's just nerves. It's the blood moving out of the body and it's just touching the nerves as it goes. It's just a nerve reaction. It's all over so quickly. 
Is that just nerves? Yeah, definitely. The animal was brain dead before it hit the floor in the stunning box. Even now, I'm not put off having a steak or something like that. I'm, I probably won't have one today. Well, in the long term. Every steak that you were ever eaten in your life has been produced like this. Yeah. It makes me a more thoughtful consumer of meat, a more, a more knowledgeable one. A lot of kids in the inner cities think their steak comes from Tesco's. They can't associate looking at a cow in a book or in a field and think, that's actually where I get my steak from. Yeah. It's a wonderful tribute to that animal's life. It's in good condition, it's worked all its life, and it's providing us with food. It's a wonderful tribute. I'm sure he'd rather have just had a quick ceremony at a disco after. <laughs> the abattoir was unsettling, and I wanted to get straight back to the cows on the farm to be with them in happier circumstances. Farmer Day was packed as tightly as a bull's boxer shorts, but my talk of abattoirs last night had clearly upset the cows. There was more poo in the yard than behind Paula Radcliffe's running machine. Ah. Don't sit. Don't sit. Don't sit in that. Well, stand. You wake up, have breakfast. First job of the day is to grape all the cow mess all the way out of this. Cock a ruddy doodle doo. Like the world's most disappointing ice cream van. Shit shovel coming through. <laughs> this is where my reversing skills are going to be properly tested. <laughs> that is not a backward flip you want to make. Keep going, keep going. Use this cutter thing now. Next up. Breakfast at Shittany's. Silage. Cows will eat it till the kids come home. Come on, Molly. Hey, what? What I want to do now is to try and lift that massive spiky claw thing on the front without coming up with about seven cows skewered on the end of it like some kind of horrendously ugly kebab. Or two evils. I'm either going to take the roof off or we're going to squash about seven cows' heads flat. Whoa. Oh, not that way. Not, oh, not that way either. Everyone relax. No cows in the way, no? More, 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 more. Whoa. Now, the only danger is I flatten you with it. I'm not so worried about that, David. I was doing so well on Tractor Factor that David decided to give me my own special set of wheels. He called it the beast. Not to complete loser in six seconds. getting on well with the cows. It was finally time to try me out on the ultimate farming gadget. David called it a dog. David said he's going to give us a sheepdog demonstration. Walk! Walk! Basically, I see it more as a competition, really, head to head, me and him. Go on. What he doesn't know is I've watched Babe four times. Walk! Well, come here. <laughs> OK, Rod. I understand from watching Babe that every flock is different. 
So what specific instructions do this lot answer to? Well, it's not the flock, to... it's the dog, because she's waiting for a command now. Two rising whistles for left. That's it. Penny whistle? What about... Um, I've got a feeling your sheepdog's broken. No, no, no. It is, I think it's broken. Well... Oh, you've got it going again. At least, at least it's working again. That's the main thing. Say walk, say walk, see what happens. Walk! Walkies! Stand still! Just stand there. Under no circumstances do anything whatsoever. Respond to nothing. Walk, sit, stand, heel, come by, away to go. Look at that. I told her to ignore all that and she did. Oh, it's working again. Hey, good girl, good girl. Yes, look at that, we're like a synchronised machine. I could almost smell my farming wings. With my sexy boiler suit and the beast, I was like a rural David Hasselhoff, ready for any emergency. But while the Hoff rescued bikini-clad beauties, I had some fence posts to deliver on another faulty trailer. Go that way! Go that way! You wish this was that tractor trailer? This is what I'd be doing, Trish. Take that, you trailer! Take that, you piece of trailer trash! No, not bad. Not bad, is it? I got angry with it. OK. Ooh, Ready for the, for the next one? Yeah. Oh, shit, the bed. I think that's in. Probably good enough, that one. Yep, OK. So if you grab the bucket and the hammer... I will. You catch your breath back while you're walking to the bucket. OK, yeah. David. The man about the farm, look at him. He's all practical knowledge and hands-on and manual labour and knows what he's doing. Look at me, I'm stuck in a bramble, trapped by my hat. Oh, where's Rod, David? Oh, he's not coming in for tea, he's trapped over there in a bramble, his hat's got stuck. Right, what's next? My time as a farmer was nearly up. I needed to keep calm, because for my final challenge, I had to run half the milking shed that evening, and I was determined not to set the cows off. I didn't want to muck out again. In fact, I'd rather have to tell a bear with an upset stomach that the woods are closed for cleaning. Cow number one, over there, please. Where's... Somebody come over my side. It's quite calm at the moment. I don't want to make too much noise. There was the odd bottom malfunction, but it was considerably less explosive than last time. Ouch. I was far more in tune with these dairy characters. It's not difficult to see how you'd build up a really close bond with all of them and know them all individually and their personalities. In truth, I was falling in love with farming. On a practical level, I was about as well suited to it as Axel Rose. But I was going to miss this farm, and there was one little fella I was going to miss more than anything. It's strange to be feeding them again. I haven't been to an abattoir. But do you want the good news? You're going to be here for a while. You're not going to be in dog food this week. Really starting to uh, get into farm life and enjoy it. We've come a long way in two days, haven't we? Hey, don't kick me in the nuts. Hey, take it off. <laughs> hey, I'm going to call you Gareth. You're named after the nice man in the abattoir. If you do ever end up at the abattoir, there's no way he's going to kill another Gareth. Hey, come on. <laughs>